ladies and gentlemen, Aaron John here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dog Strobers fan channel, and welcome to a DRFC daily report, bringing you the latest news from Dog Strobers Football Club. Today we're going to be speaking about the manager shortlist, and we're going to be sharing my thoughts on who I think will fit the criteria. So before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a video. And let's get straight into this video. Now, first of all, we have to rule out the bookies' favourite. Michael Flynn, Graham Coughlin, and Paul Cook were not, were not on the list of shortlisted candidates. I don't even know if they applied or not, so I can rule them out straight away. But Free Press put out a statement uh, just actually yesterday. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, but... Around 140 applications were received for the role ahead of last Friday's deadline with the shortlist confirmed on Monday. Five candidates have been invited for interviews, which is due to begin on Monday with the hope that the process will be completed before Christmas. Now, among those to be invited is current caretaker boss Gary McSheffrey, who is considered a live contender for the role. It's been previously been the policy for the Rovers board to take interim managers through the interview process to aid their development, even if they have little chance of finding the job. But McSheffrey is understood to be a strong contender to secure the job on a permanent basis, having impressed sections of the Rovers' hierarchy since the dismissal of Richard Allen just a fortnight ago. The board are continuing to assess all options for the type of individual they want to appoint to replace Wellens. Uh, of the other four candidates, aside from McSheffrey, two are potential appointments as head coaches, while the other two would be managers. Current bookmaker's favourite, Graham Coughlin, is not on the list, nor is former New Newport County boss Michael Flynn or ex Ipswich town manager Paul Cook. All four, though, have decent experience in management, backed up in most cases with extensive work on coaching staff. All boast time in charge of the championship, while two have managed in the Premier League and the others across the EFL. Following the appointment, Rovers are set to act quickly to appoint support staff. Should one of the options of the head coach role be selected, the club will look to bring a head of football operations slash director of football as soon as possible. A good portion of the applications received for the manager's job would lend themselves to such a role, while the, other, while the club's hierarchy have also assessed other suitable individuals. The appointment of a set-piece coach is also high on the agenda, and away from the manager's search, Rovers are due to hold a player recruitment meeting today, where several potential signings are to be lined up, subject to the new manager's approval. So let's think about that um, sort of individually. Let's think about this logically, shall we? Now, I actually put a post on the Rovers Facebook group, and I highlighted several key points. I'm going to go back to that sort of uh, use. Um, now, let's, I want to, let's debrief it a bit. I've debriefed it on social media already. I want to debrief it again. So the other four candidates, aside from McSheffrey, two are potential appointments as head coaches, while the other two would be managers. Now... Obviously, I like that they've got two managers and two head coaches, as well as the temporary manager, the caretaker manager. They're giving the caretaker manager a chance. Me, personally, even though Gary would do a great job, I'm sure he would do, along with Frank Sinclair, his assistant, I think they'd both be brilliant. Um, I spoke to Frank, actually, before the um, Shrewsbury match. Big shout-out to Frank. Chelsea legend. And, um, yeah love that he's here the passion that him and gary show is amazing um just because of the situation we're in and because i think gary and frank just need that little bit more time just to work with the academy work up their um portfolios as managers and just 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 keep working just keep working where they are i would like to just not give it to Gary so far. I, I don't want to really give it to Gary permanently. I just think it's just a, a big job too soon. You know, there might there might be a few people out there that'll say, well, if we take Gary McSheffrey, there's real potential there with the youth coming through, even if we do get relegated this season. Sorry, I do not want to get relegated to League 2 this season. I really, really don't. And now with that win against Shrewsbury and hopefully three points on Saturday against Lincoln, there is a chance to save our season. I would rather take my hands with someone more experienced to save our season. Sorry, that's just me being brutally honest. But Gary McSheffrey, don't get me wrong, he would be a wonderful manager of this football club at some point. Absolutely would be a wonderful manager. To today, this year, it's just that big job too soon. We need someone that's more experienced that's going to save our season. Nothing against Gary. 
I just think he needs to keep working where he is. Same with Frank Sinclair, but they will both get there. I'm sure of that. Um, in terms of no Coughlin, no Flynn, no Cook, how do I feel about that? No Graham Coughlin, I'm not going to lie very happy about that. I don't think he would have been the best appointment at all. Paul Cook, am I sad about that? Kind of, but then again, you look at Ipswich, he had a lot of players to work with that, were gel that had to gel together at the same time. A lot of money to spend, didn't really get the best out of them, and got sacked. Michael Flynn did decent at Newport, gotten quite far as a, as a football club. Do I think he could have made the step up to League One? I reckon he could. So I was a little bit gutted about Michael Flynn, but we move on. Now, all four have decent experience in management, but in most cases with extensive work on coaching staff. All boast time in charge of the championship, while two have managed in the Premier League and others across the EFL. Now, there are plenty of names in the bookies at the moment that fit that description. Managed in the Premier League, two have managed in the Premier League, two across the EFL. So I'm looking at this logically. And I'm just taking the book as an example. Mick McCarthy. He's managed across the Premier League and the Championship. I think he's one of the names. Don't get me wrong. I could be wrong. I could be really wrong. I've got a sinking... Not a sinking feeling, actually, because it's a good one. I've got a feeling Mick McCarthy is one of the names that are being interviewed. That's just my guess. Nigel Atkins, again, I think that's a name that's very likely to have applied. Again, whether he's made the shortlist or not, we don't know. But I think Atkins could be right up there in terms of fitting the criteria. Would that be a name I would go for? Probably not on recent record. If it was the Nigel Atkins of Southampton that gave them back-to-back -back promotions to the Premier League, then I'd take Nigel Atkins. But on his recent record of Charlton as well, I don't know. Charlton fans may disagree. Charlton fans may look and think, oh. Atkins is great for you. He'll keep you up. On recent record, for me, I just don't think he's got what it takes. Chris Hewton, he's managed across the championship. He could be an option. Manager, he could be an option. But again, the money for him would be would be ridiculous. So Chris Hewton, very unlikely. Alex Neal fits the criteria. He's managed in the Premier League before. Could be an option. Um People like Barry and Eustace and John Terry, way too inexperienced. Woodgate, again, inexperienced. Grayson's works in the EFL, but I just don't think he's got what it takes either at the moment. Steve Evans, again, I wouldn't really like him at the club. I, I think there's just too much too much water under the bridge. Um, looking at other names, Neil Lennon. I mean, he, he managed Bolton, so he's got some kind of championship experience. He's a very experienced manager in general. Worked with Celtic. Don't get me wrong, but I think he was managing Celtic in Europe at one point. I, I might be wrong about that, but... Um, I swear Neil Lennon was in Europe at some point with some club. I, I might be wrong about that. I'm going to have to double-check the research on that. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to double-check the research on that, because I might be wrong. Um... Whereabouts, hang on, whereabouts, 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 whereabouts. Um, oh, hang on. No, he, he managed Celtic in the Champions League. So, I mean, could you, could, this is just me thinking optimistically. Could you imagine if Neil Lennon, who managed Celtic in the Champions League just eight years ago, comes to Doncaster Rovers. That would just be amazing, wouldn't it? I, I, I would personally take... It, people might think I'm wrong. I would take Neil Lennon if he's applied. If he's applied for the job, I'll take him. I think he's someone I'd take, personally. Um, looking at some of the other names here, I mean... Pff, Lampard, no chance. Um, Danny Wilson, no chance. Neil Harris... Talks of him maybe going to Ipswich and being the best favourite, best favourite there. Chris Coleman, yeah, that's an option. Um, managed in the Premier League, managed in the Football League. His football might not be the best. Steve Bruce, pff, I'm going to need counselling if we've got Steve Bruce. Nothing against the man, but his football sometimes. Newcastle fans can vouch for me. He was atrocious. 
Um, but maybe he might do a different job with us. Who knows? But again, Wade's to be a nightmare. Um, Harry Kuehl, again, that might be an interesting one. Um, he's managed to cross, you know, the Football League. I think he was in the Championship at one point. So, uh, he, he might be an option. So, I think that overall, again, like I said, that's, you know, an interesting shout. There's a few interesting shouts in there, to be fair. Um... Now, in terms of one of the options for a head coach role be select to the club will look to bring in a head of football operations slash director of football as soon as possible. This I want to highlight, in my opinion. Because it does not matter. And you know what? This is one of the moments on this channel where I'm going to be brutally honest here and maybe harshly honest to the club, to their face on this video. It doesn't matter whether you appoint a head coach or a manager. You appoint someone anyway as director of football. It, I, I don't care whether you just want to appoint one for a head coach. If it was up to me, I would appoint one anyway. Because we need one anyway. And I've said this for weeks. We need a director of football. We need a head of football operations. Someone with a bit of brain and a bit of football knowledge. Get in that club and sort it out. Because I've no doubt that if we survive this season, we can go we, we can go and surprise people. Normally the team that was unexpected to finish in a low position by some people, but end up surviving, they get expected to finish just as low the next season. Let's go and surprise people again next season if we stay up. Let's go and make a name for ourselves. And it's up to who we appoint in that director's role. Because we should be appointing one anyway. Don't care whether it's head coach or manager. Should be having one anyway. Whether that's Steve McLaren or anyone else. And, I, and that report did say many of the names that apply for the job would lend themselves to the head of football operations or director of football job. If, it's, if we don't give the job, the manager's job, to someone like Mick McCarthy or Neil Lennon, or Steve Bruce, or whoever. But they'd be happy to lend themselves to a director of football. Even the ones that didn't make the shortlist of five. Even the ones that didn't make that little shortlist to be chosen from for next week. Even the ones that just applied in general. Give them the job. Talk with them. What would you do as a director of football if they give you enough evidence to suggest they'll do a bloody good job? Give them it. Give them all the money they want. Because I guarantee you they know a lot of, about football. If they know a lot about football and they're committed, go for it. Put all the money in the bank and go for it. Because there's nothing to lose now. And then away from the manager player recruitment and I just said let's just see what we do let's just see what players we recruit and again depends who the manager wants because let's look at the shortlist criteria again shall we two managers that have managed throughout the EFL and the championship two managers or head coaches that have managed in the Premier League that that is what you call high profile now, depending on the recent record, it depends. But from the criteria, it's probably one of the most high-profile appointments we could make since Darren Moore. I'm hoping he doesn't get poached if he does well in the next couple of years. I'm hoping this is something longer term that we can just keep and keep and keep and build and build and build and get better. That would be the goal. That would be the ultimate ambition for me as a fan. Who do I want? Looking at the bookies, like I said, I wouldn't mind McCarthy or Lennon. I really wouldn't. Um, I mean, it, like I said, there's still a chance it could be a load of people. God, could you imagine if we afforded Chris Hewton? Jesus Christ. We obviously live in Cloud Cuckoo Land if we can afford Chris Hewton, but who knows? Maybe they found the extra money from somewhere. Hmm. Where have they found the extra money from? Maybe the Eco Power deal? 
Maybe the events they're planning off the field. Maybe the other stuff they're, think that they're planning on doing, they're thinking about doing, that they announced at the Meet the Owners event, all the debts being cleared, all the loans being cleared, the HMRC being cleared by the new year. Give this owner time. Give them time. I'm not saying don't have an opinion on the owner. If you want to go in the south stand and chant Neto, 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 Gavin Baldwin shops at Neto, if you want to chant that, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Who am I to judge your opinion? I'm not inside your head, living rent free. This is your opinion. It's a fan channel. Everyone's welcome. Whether you're Baldwin in, Baldwin out, this player in, this player out, club in, club out, support the club, not the regime, support the regime and the team. Wherever you lie on the side, whichever side of the pillow you sleep on, whichever side of bed you get out in the morning, we're open to every opinion. That's all I've ever been about. That's all I've ever wanted to have been about. Be open to everyone, not just one side over the other. I hear people chanting behind me, Gavin Baldwin, get out of their club. The only thing I respect about that is that they have that opinion. Because could you imagine if someone had that same opinion and didn't say anything? Or was scared to say anything? They're being the voice of the voiceless, no matter if you agree with it or disagree with it. They're being the voice of the flaming voiceless. So for me, say what you want. If you want my personal opinion, then I believe that the owner is trying everything they can to make this club run smoothly. If you want me to play devil's advocate as a presenter, let's see what happens. Let's see if this plan comes into place. And if it falls apart again, there can't be any excuses this time. I'm playing devil's advocate here. On the one hand, let's give them time with this new plan and this new manager and the new head of football operations, director of football, etc. With the new events, with the new stadium name, with all the money coming in, with the debts being cleared, let's give them a chance now. Especially with this significant funds in January. Give them a chance. On the other hand, as devil's advocate, I'm saying, if it falls apart, there can't be any more excuses. Got to turn to the board, got to ask them what went wrong, why did it go wrong again. So I'm playing devil's advocate as a presenter. If you want me to be personally honest, I say give them time. Because I want to see what this ownership can do now that all the HMRC debts have been cleared, the COVID debts have been cleared, or about to be cleared, about to be cleared, the HMRC, the player loan debts, the EFL stuff. Now that they're all starting to be cleared and will be hopefully cleared by the by around March, April, fingers crossed, you know, as they announce that they meet the owners, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And hopefully we'll see significant funds in January given to the new manager. And especially, and if you think about it, the board have nowhere to hide. Even for the Baldwin Inners, they've got nowhere to hide. Because if you, if you appoint someone like a Mick McCarthy... Or a Neil Lennon, someone who's experienced, knows the game, and knows exactly what he wants to get the best out of the, t out of the team and the club. If you don't give him the backing, you're in trouble. You're in big, big trouble. Because why would, no why would anyone not back an experienced name like a McCarthy or a Lennon or an Atkins? Even Atkins if he gets appointed. Or... <sighs> Any of the head coaches that come in, you know, and, and how could you, how can the board not back a director of football when he knows what he's talking about, when he knows football? That's the other side of it. The board have got nowhere to hide if they don't back this new manager or back, plan to back him like they say they're going to. So, like I said, playing devil's advocate here, but me personally, I'm going to give the ownership time with this. So... There we are. Thank you very, very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I'm Aaron Chandler from Furrow Football, DRFC, Caitlin, the Rovers Live. And that, my friends, full time. Rovers Side Die. Thank you very much. I will be 
there at Sinsel Bank on Saturday against Lincoln City. So you will see the first ever away match vlog of the season. So stay tuned for that. And also Friday, you're going to see the preview of that game. So stay tuned for all of that. See you guys later. Oh,